Hey, welcome investors to the 40 Finance Channel. My name's Jeff Beers. Today I'm gonna to be talking about the riskiest stocks in my portfolio. Some of these names might surprise you. It doesn't mean that I'm selling these stocks, it's just that I'm calling out that there, there's much higher level uh, of risk for these stocks to go down in the near term. So we'll go through the list of all the stocks in my portfolio. I'll let you know which ones are risky right now, why I think they're risky, and where they might go from here. Reminder as always that my stock picks and projections are just my opinion for your entertainment. Please make sure you do your own research. However, if you enjoy stock market analysis like this, going deep on stocks, please subscribe to the channel. Give this video a like. Thank you very much for all of your support. All right, so for a full perspective, we're gonna go down the, the list of all the individual stocks that I own. Uh, sorted by their market value or their weight in my portfolio. We're not gonna talk about all these stocks, I'm just gonna call out the ones that I think are risky, then we'll break it down. Uh, PayPal, I have very little concern about. Visa, very little concern about. DraftKings, this will be one of our high-risk stocks that we'll get into. Square, this is another high-risk stock. Etsy, although Etsy is a little bit smaller and has more price fluctuations, I do not see Etsy as a risky stock. Amazon, zero concerns about that. TJX, zero concerns about that. Even though retail stores uh, may struggle in the future, the demise of the mall, all those things, I'm not worried about TJX, particularly uh, in the price that I paid for it, which is a cost basis of 4808. Taiwan Semiconductor, it does have risks just being in Taiwan uh, and the things that could go wrong per, uh, with politics with China. Uh, I'm not worried about that right now. And I think the chip sector is hot, so no super concerns for Taiwan Semi. Rocket Mortgage, this is one that's on the risk list as well, and we'll get into why. TAP, which is Molson Coors, uh, I'm not super worried about it. This is a con consumer defensive play, dividend stock. I, I don't think it'll ever 10x from here, uh, but I'm not worried that it's going to go down. Palantir, this will be on the high risk uh, list as well. Magnite, I'm not super worried about Magnite, most notably because I have a relatively small position and I think that the streaming universe itself is only going to grow from here, uh, so not super worried about that. Sabre does reservation type software for uh, airlines and hotels. I'm not worried about that, mostly because my cost basis is at $11. Again, it may not be a rocket ship, but I don't think that it's going to go down much further. Smile Direct Club, this one has some risk as well, but frankly, uh, my cost basis is 764. I'm just not sure it can go down uh, too much farther from there, but they do have some work to do to get their act together. PaySafe, this one is going to be a carryover uh, from a risk basis to DraftKings in the gambling market. Uh, pay safe for me. I'm not in uh, any interest in selling it, but it will have similar concerns uh, that DraftKings has. First up, we have Square, ticker symbol SQ, currently trading at 238. And the number one issue with Square right now, uh, or the most obvious concern most people should have, is the fact that it has a very high valuation, trailing 12 months uh, P ratio of 333. If you look at from a statistics page, you know, the forward PE does drop. You got price to sales almost in double digits, though it is coming down from where we saw on 1231. There's no other way to slice it except that uh, Square at 238 is priced to do uh, incredible things over the next, you know, three to five years. We will see if that comes to fruition. All right, in addition to a high valuation, Square also has a couple areas that uh, to me are high risk business interest. The first would be cryptocurrency. I actually like that Square is in that space uh, because it gives me some exposure to the crypto markets, even though I don't typically buy individual coins myself. But we all know how volatile those worlds are and if it's based on transactions and they're holding it on their balance sheet to a very small degree 
Uh, there is additional risk uh, for Square stock in that space. And then lastly, and a lot of stocks are gonna have this, but I would say like cybersecurity is a huge concern uh, for Square and any company like it. And outside of just normal corporate cybersecurity, which I'm sure Square you know, has uh, thought about this a million times and invested wisely, you have the Cash App cybersecurity, which I think is an additional threat. And if we ever woke up one day and saw that people's money uh, was missing from Cash App or something like that, you could have a PR nightmare on your hands depending on what the scenario is. And when you're already valued at the tippy top, the only real room you have to go is down from there. All right, next up is DraftKings. This is a stock that I bought near its IPO slash uh, SPAC debut last year. Uh, one year chart is filled with ebbs and flows. I would expect you know, this type of activity to continue. If you're curious, I think that we're probably looking much closer to football season before we see a full DraftKings recovery. Looking at valuations across time, you know, price to sales right now of 23X. This company is not profitable, uh, nor does it expect to be, I think, for at least two to three years. They will have um, markets that turn profitable, most likely New Jersey here in the next year or two. Uh, but the company as a whole will be uh, basically uh, shelling out money uh, for several more years. So we have to look at price to sales you know, you could get into price to book if you want, enterprise value, it doesn't matter. Just like Square, the expectation here is that DraftKings does some big, big things from a revenue standpoint over the next three to five years. All right, so similar to Square, big time valuation for DraftKings. You also have what will be an incredibly competitive USA gambling market. That's my bull thesis on DraftKings. It's a service that I personally use uh, for daily fantasy sports and am excited to use for sports betting uh, if and when Ohio officially approves it. So I'm bullish on the stock still, but make no bones about it. They are going to have to grind their way uh, for two, three, four, five years uh, to really get any sort of major traction in this market. And even at the top, so the, the best scenario, I think, for DraftKings right now would be to hold maybe 25 or 30% of the mobile sports betting market. That would be huge. There's no Amazon theory here that they are going to be the only provider. But if they could get to 20 or 30%, say, in five years and fend off, uh, you know, the FanDuel's, the MGM's, all the other players that are in the space, then they would be doing well. But to think that it's going to be easy is silly, and thus DraftKings has a lot of risk to it. All right, next on the board is Palantir. Again, this is a company that is not profitable, so no PE, no EPS. This is one that I started buying in, I think, January off the top of my head. My cost basis sits around 24. I bought uh, several lots in this range, um, and I'm happy with where I am at that price. But similar to the other stocks that we've looked at here, you know, you're in the 30s now on price to sales, uh, well above any sort of reasonable threshold for a software company. Price to book at 25x, peg ratio, almost double digits. There's nothing really here that says $25 uh, for Palantir when you consider how many shares are out there. All right, but with that being said on Palantir, I am super bullish on this company expanding into the corporate uh, world, which they've already done, uh, healthcare, international. I think the government bookings continue to go up. And I expect it's going to take Palantir probably at least three years to become gap profitable and show revenue growth and ratios that get other investors excited about it. Um, it's an early bet on a, on a company that while it's been around for 10 or 12 years, it's just now on the market. It's had a lot of hoopla. Uh, and so I do expect to see more dips with Palantir but I will be adding during those times. 
Just know that if you're buying a stock like this and your expectation is to be rich in 12 months, uh, in my opinion, Palantir will not be that for you. All right, next stock is Rocket Companies. And this one, unlike the others, is actually undervalued in my opinion. It's not showing a PE or an EPS ratio here, but I think on the statistics page, yeah, here we go. We have trailing PE of eight. Notice this forward PE though, it goes up to nine. And that's really where the big risk is with this company right now. You have uh, basically zero on price to sales and a pretty fair price to book, I guess you could say. All right, so what's the big problem with Rocket considering the valuation? Well, it's not the stock price. <laughs> and I'll tell you, it's more or less the outlook for housing here in the USA and the outlook for interest rates. Rocket has this cloud hanging over top of it that's gonna take a while to shake off. And that cloud is the fact that we just got off of the biggest boom time for refinances and home purchases in quite some time, and that was 2020. Now we're faced with a housing shortage. Uh, there's still a big refinance market out there in terms of eligibility, uh, but no one expects the pace to match what we saw last year. So what you're gonna have with Rocket probably for the next two years is these analysts projecting downward earnings and downward revenues. And while the stock is fairly valued, in my opinion, people are not going to like what they see in terms of analyst evaluation of the stock. Now, Rocket could turn it around in terms of revenue and EPS by expanding to new markets, uh, which they are trying to get into auto financing. Uh, they can also try to get into new home purchasing more, which is also on their roadmap. We'll see, though, if those ideas gain any traction. If they do, Rocket will break out of the current projections that are going downward, start to make some upward trajectory, and then you'll have increasing projections, which will boost the stock price. Problem is, from a risk scenario, uh, you can never really tell if that's going to happen. All right, guys, so those are my five riskiest stocks in my portfolio and the reasons why. Doesn't mean that I don't think those stocks will go up or obviously if I was super concerned about the risk, I would sell them all. Um, I just think it's gonna take longer than people think for those home runs to develop. I believe in all of those companies and I think they all offer uh, a better risk reward uh, from the scenario that I'm looking at them. Uh, but it's important to know that there's certainly nothing guaranteed in terms of stock appreciation with any of the five names that I mentioned today. All right, investors, let me know what your riskiest stocks are below in the comments. Thank you all for watching. Please give a like, subscribe to the channel, all the things. Really appreciate your support. We'll see you on the next video.